Hi, this is John Hewlett. I'm the founder and owner of Cardio Miracle. And today, how much fun is this going to be? I'm with two of my dear friends, Keith Clearwater, PGA professional, extraordinary fit, athletic, handsome, stalwart human being entering into his seventh decade of life in his early 60s. And Michael Smith, also former NBA player, European player, commentator for the LA Clippers, now uh, the host with Alema Harrington of the Utah Jazz. And how great it is to have these two great, great human beings, as well as advocates of uh, Cardio Miracle with me today. So I'm, uh, this is exciting. I mean, you know, if I, if I was enamored by being around famous people, I would be really enamored right now and be really nervous. But uh, I guess through the years, um, I've had the opportunity of being with some pretty cool guys, many of which, in fact, I met uh, Keith years ago, actually with, uh, I, I think probably through Steve Young. When I was uh, used to take Steve Young to basketball games, he was always looking for a free ticket and he liked sitting on the front row. So that's where I met Keith and then uh, had the opportunity of getting acquainted with Michael. Of course, I've watched Michael through the years. And so to have Mike uh, recently kind of uh, join as part of our advocacy group for professional athletes was very exciting. But I think it's it's only appropriate um, to uh, let, you know, I can ask you a, a few questions, but for anyone who's a sports fan, um, you know, I think, and, and I think Mike can, can attest to this, even the best athletes in the world would love to be a great golfer. <laughs> There's a lot of them, Steph Curry, Michael Jordan, whatever, who would probably turn in their sneakers if they could have been Tiger Woods instead of who they were even in the other sports because golf is arguably the most difficult game to master even for the greatest athletes. And so uh, I just, I think it'd be important, Keith, for you, I know that you're uh, humble, but I'd like to, if you wouldn't mind to share a little bit of your uh, golf history, you know, in, in the abbreviated fashion, because I know your accomplishments are amazing, four-time All-American on the BYU golf team, national championship, et cetera. And, uh, and you just gave me another little tidbit about uh, the hole behind you, uh, the uh, Olympic Club in San Francisco. But tell us a little bit about your uh, athletic uh, career, Keith, and, and how, how that now has – well, let's just talk about your athletic career, and then we'll talk about how you've stayed so fit and uh, are, are kind of iconic in the golf world as being one of the first – the first, arguably, that lifted weights – and, uh, and really cared about the physical stamina and fitness that goes along with golf. Well, this uh, backdrop I have is very precious to me because uh, I actually hold the U.S. Open course record there of 64 on a Saturday in, in the 1987 U.S. Open. So uh, uh, Olympic, you know, I grew up in the area and then to have that experience, uh, very special, very special place. But, uh, you know, I was rookie of the year. Uh, have had so many great experiences in golf, won twice, a uh, host of other things taken place in the, because of the game of golf. But uh, I've just, I've just loved the game because of what you said, you know, Mike Smith, who's here with us today, he can beat me on a good day and he's a professional basketball player. Okay. He works hard at golf. He's a great golfer, but we have a fun banter about that. It's really neat to see people come into the game. He's also a pickleballer. You asked for my background in in golf. Uh, those are the those really are the highlights. I mean, I've made I've played in three hundred and eighty PGA Tour events. I think I've made two hundred and sixty cuts. Uh, so uh, you know, I've been out there a long time, been a part of the game forever, and I, I love it. I love I love the people of the game. I love what it means, but I also love. Uh, I, I still have kind of a selfish pride in being able to compete late in my life, and I'm sixty four now, and I still want to get it done. Uh, I've been a little frustrated with certain things, inability to get things done with the scoring parts of my game, but it's just always a great test. I love being fit enough and healthy enough and recovering well enough that that's still a reality. So that's kind of where I sit with golf. Uh, love the game. Uh, I, I just think it's a lifelong game and I'm so, so grateful that it's been a part of my life. John. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, and I just like if, you know, I, I don't know, and I, maybe I need to know accurately. So, Michael, I, I, you know, I've said for years that 
You know, you hear in sports, you hear about Bo Jackson, you hear about Chuck Bednardic. Chuck Bednardic, I played golf with Chuck at the Jerry Kramer uh, Hall of Fame Open at one time. Got somebody calling me, sorry. Um, I was playing with Chuck Bednardic. He was the last person in the NFL to play both ways in an NFL game. And they named the, I mean, he was the meanest, the nastiest. He made he made Dick Butkus look kind of calm. Bidnardic was, but I played in a pro-am with Chuck Bidnardic and he was, he was unbelievable. What a gracious, nice man, gnarled up fingers, you know, from head slaps on, on helmets yeah. and things. But the reason I bring that up is that Michael Smith, and maybe and maybe I'm wrong, but Michael Smith, along with Danny Ainge, ironically, both best friends and, and former BYU uh, athletes. I mean, Michael Smith, you know, was all state, I believe, maybe all American in all three sports in high school. So he could have played baseball. He could have played football. He could have played college basketball at virtually any Division One college. So uh, then he decided that being 6'10", he, he took the route with uh, basketball and had a very distinguished career there and, and, and played with Larry Bird, the, you know, the Boston Celtics for a couple of years and then played in Europe. Michael, is it true? Were you, were you all state in California or even all American in all three sports in high school? I, I was, and you're making me blush a little bit because I'm an old guy now and it's hard to remember <laughs> all those times back then. But uh, I, I, I really don't know how that happened, except that I went to a, a football powerhouse high school. And so they didn't have a great basketball history. They had a fantastic football history. And my freshman year in high school football, the coach came and said, he, he dragged me out of basketball camp in the summer. And he said, you need to come over here and get here two hours earlier so you can train with the footballers. And I said, no, I said, I'm going to play basketball, maybe a little volleyball. I'm not sure about baseball, but certainly not football. And he says, no. He says, you're going to be my quarterback. And he, he says, I have some other great receivers and that's what you're going to do. And so you can go four years fast forward from that moment, John, and we lost one game in four years of high school football. And that concluded with winning the, let's say the, the equivalent of a state championship. It was the Southern half of California. CIF, wasn't it the CIF? Yeah, CIF? yeah, right. Wow. California Interscholastic Federation. We won every game that was 14 games. And, <laughs> and because, and Keith, you'll get a kick out of this. I really didn't know any better, right? I, I really just did what the coaches told me to do. In other words, drop back, read the defense. If number one option's open, throw it. If number two option's open, throw it to him. And if he's not open, look for three. And if three's not open, either throw it out of bounds or go scamper and run. And that's what I did. And we won every game. And uh, <laughs> in the process, I broke every record in California high school football. But that's probably because of the coaching staff and the school I went. And it, it just so happened that I aligned with some really good athletes at the same time. And it's funny. My wide receivers were also my starting forwards on my high school basketball team. So <laughs> we great. kind of played all sports and, and uh, I never touched a golf club till I think I was 24 years old. So that's just become a passion of mine. And what Keith didn't tell you is growing up in Walnut Creek, California, he's the kid that when he was introduced to the game was crawling under the fence at seven in the morning and his parents were looking for him at nine o'clock at night. That's, that's really what it takes to be great at anything. Tell me, tell me this. I mean, for how tall were you in high school? Were you six, eight, six, nine? Cause you're so are you six, 10 now or six, nine. I was six, four as a freshman, six, seven as a sophomore, six, nine as a junior, <laughs> and then started to slow down and six, 10 as a senior. So oh, I've got to interrupt. I mean, you're looking I've got to interrupt. Mike, when I filled out my football form for freshman football, I was 5'2", 105. 5'2", oh. <laughs> 105. Can oh you even imagine goodness. being that little? I had not a hair on my body. I'd walk into the showers, and everyone was a man, and I was a little boy. 
And you know, the next year I, I aged, I, I grew about uh, eight inches. So uh, that was, that was good for me. Imagine well, my was... wife who was five, nine. And at the same time, if we were the same age, five, two and five, not, she was full height at my age. Oh at, my goodness. You didn't, so, you didn't know her then though. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I was a runt. So anyhow, I can't imagine strutting the hallways of high school at six, four, six, eight, no, six, ten. No, no, no. Let me just tell you. It, it all looks wonderful to look back on now. And you, you think you were the cat's meow, but I was six, four as a freshman. I was skinny as a rail. I was pimply. Uh, I was six, <laughs> seven as a sophomore. I was shy. And imagine on my sophomore teams, I'm playing on all the varsities, volleyball, basketball, and football. So I'm the young kid. I don't fit into those groups. I don't know the girls that age. I was really, I was really kind of that, um not awkward shy, but I was a little bit awkward for sure I was not comfortable in my own skin until maybe my senior year well I can't even imagine what it's like I mean it's like having uh, the stork as a as the quarterback I mean you're looking you're looking the safety right in the eye who's 20 yards okay. behind behind the line of scrimmage at 6 8 6 10 as a quarterback my goodness we used to laugh about Mark Wilson being six five, six six, and thin at yeah. BYU. But you would have made you'd have been looking down at Mark Wilson. That, that's really had to be amazing. Your your sight line above in those days probably most your offensive linemen were six two, six three. They weren't six seven or eight. But even today, you see some of these guys at six eight, six nine on the offensive line. Very few quarterbacks can see over those dudes, and you you would have had it made. Maybe you should you should lace it back up. There's probably a few teams that are tired of the six foot quarterbacks that aren't doing very good. Well, you're both being very nice. Um, I was maybe a bit ahead of my time in terms of my height at that position for sure. I just didn't know life any other way, right? I, I've only experiencing life in this body from my <laughs> perspective. So when they're telling me to throw to that target or throw to that target. I was doing it with great ease. And on my left flanker, I had a wide receiver who was six, five. He went division one, my right flanker or wide receiver was six foot four. He went division one. My tight end was six foot four, 220 pounds. He led the state in receptions with 83 catches and 16 or 17 touchdowns. He'd never played college football, even though he was recruited by everybody because he was the ninth pick in the baseball draft. And wow. And to be honest, when I tell you uh, I felt like it was easy, my coaches traveled every summer and spring to BYU to get their West Coast offense and to Bill Walsh in San Francisco to get their offense. And they oh, wow. came back and brought those plays back to our high school. And if you think about it, high school football in the 80s in California was run first. And here we were throwing the ball 40 times a game and people were like, what are these guys doing? And our system was so elaborate that there really was no defense that could stop us. And so I literally would walk to the line of scrimmage, Keith, and it, it was like looking, staring down a wedge with your favorite yardage. And I was like, <laughs> I know exactly what that safety's going to do. I know exactly what that corner's going to do. And I would just watch the, the weak side safety. And if he cheated over, I mean, I had him too. And then I, I just would drop back five steps. I'd watch it all unravel and I'd throw it right, right where they weren't. And uh, literally we were never tested in 14 games. I think we won the championship 38 to 14 or something like that. It was, wow. it was crazy. And that, but I, and that was, and that was the Zenith of USC running football with OJ Stimpton and Anthony Davis. And I mean, all the great Mike Garrett, all the great USC running backs was at the same time. So for you to have an offense like that had to be mind blowing, a lot like what Lavelle pulled off at BYU in having an offense that other people, you know, you look at Mike Leach and uh, all of the different guys who came out of the, uh, the go who was Holmgren, Mike Holmgren, all those guys who came out of the Lavelle Edwards coaching tree because they were doing things that were totally against the grain and, and really changed football completely. So that was, that's exciting. Well, that's, that's fine. So was it all American in volleyball or was, did you actually go out for baseball? I played baseball for the, for the leagues that weren't associated with the school, right? We called them summer league club leagues, 12 and then senior minor, senior major. So I played till I was 17. 
but I did not play baseball for the school. I played volleyball for the school. And we were lucky enough to have a volleyball program, uh, a <laughs> men's yeah. program. And, and it was, that was the most fun of all the sports. I, I, I will say that with one caveat, Keith, I have not discovered golf yet, <laughs> which is by <laughs> far the most fun and the most difficult of all games and the most intriguing and most challenging. But, but volleyball was, to me, it was kicked back or less intense than basketball and football. And, and we had really good athletes playing volleyball at our school too. So, Oh my gosh, the California volleyball. I'm surprised they kept you off the water polo team because you could have touched in the deep end. Which would, <laughs> it was not which a would swimmer. Have been a nice advantage. <laughs> that would have been totally unfair. Well, how nice to have this conversation. I, I wanted to pe the people listening to this to understand the absolute amazing credentials that you've had as athletes. And, a few years ago, I had the chance of introducing Keith uh, somewhat to nitric oxide, and we got involved, and he became an advocate of what it could do for him for his health. And uh, it was just this summer I was able to introduce Michael to uh, Cardio Miracle and our efforts with nitric oxide. But um, maybe first, Keith, that you could just share a little bit about why why are you so passionate and share with everyone you know on the pickleball court, on the golf course, the other things that you're doing about uh, nitric oxide and, and how you as having always been a health advocate of discovering uh, the magic essentially in the science of nitric oxide and how you've been able to implement it into your trying to become ageless, live to a hundred and, and still be able to be competitive on the pickleball court. Well, yeah, first of all, I'd say, you know, there was a time when, because I wasn't versed in the science well enough, I would always be a little careful and feel like I didn't have enough to offer. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I'm completely different than that now. I feel like maybe my anecdotal experience of life through 40 years of supplementing, I might be the perfect person who has experienced every level of supplementation and to, to take this product on and let the world know about it. And like even today at, at Pickleball, I had a guy who was struggling a little, little heart arrhythmia. He's concerned about, you know, do I need to go in? He's got low blood pressure, but he's got some other cleft. And now he's on the product. I got him on it today. He's signing up today. And it's happening over and over and over. Uh, for me, uh, I don't know where to start. I had blood uh, pressure concerns. I got them all in normal ranges in a really short time, about six to eight weeks. And that really gave me a lot of peace of mind but I also feel better. So instantly I started recovering better. I could practice again more. I could hit drivers and hit, you know, stay out there. I could play pickleball in the morning and get out there in the afternoon and play. And my body wasn't made to do that at this age, uh, you know, a year ago, I couldn't do it. So those two things, you know, we, we have so many other pieces where I'm, I'm seeing my mind sharpen. I'm getting crisper with my thinking. Yeah. So you know, there are a lot of little things, too, that are side benefits. If you've ever worked out, I've got a good friend uh, whose vascularity has just increased dramatically. You know, Ty Mattingly. Ty just loves this product. He looks like a fit animal. And my vascularity has gone up. My blood flow has gone up. My oxygen uptake has increased. Uh, I recover better. I recover a lot better. So uh, uh, those very important pieces, I've been able to diminish so many of the products I was taking, which... To me, I I would travel with a literally a bag of stuff, thirty or forty products in it, and I've reduced that greatly. I do I do take an omega and a couple other things with this to support or to increase the amount that I'm getting that's already in Cardio Miracle. But uh, this is this is a product that if you take just alone will completely transform your ability to function as you get older. I I think. You know, the weekend warriors that you could call Mike and I now in our six, and Mike's not quite 60, but, you know, those those older ones of us who are trying to still produce and function and get after life. It, it's amazing. I plan to be doing this at 80. And I feel like Cardio Miracle is a big part of that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for, for guys, you start getting 64, sexual function matters. This gives you better blood flow. You know it when you take it, it improves. So you don't have to worry you don't have to take your viagras and things you're getting the kind of blood flow that matters in life so that means and you know some people say that function alone is an indicator of total health of overall health it means you know it means so many things are working in your in your body 
for optimal health. And I tend to believe that. Uh, I know how I feel. I know what I've eliminated as far as uh, all those other products. And I know what I'm able to do every day now. Uh, there's not a person, I've, I've got a good friend who's a diabetic on the, on the Champions Tour, who is now seeing great recovery, uh, able to practice longer. He's a type one and, and very few type ones really feel like they want to go out and hit balls after a round. He's doing that now. I've got another good friend out there who's, who's now for free championing Cardio Miracle to the entire Champions Tour and uh, doing it for free because he believes in the product so much and what it's done for him in all these areas of as far as practicing longer, feeling better, feeling sharper, recovering quicker. So um, it's absolute. It's real. And uh, the changes are are fun for anybody that puts it in their body. They know it. You know, the, our little slogan, you know, if you have a heart, you should be taking Cardio Miracle. It's real. Every person should be on it from from the person that has chronic problems to anybody that uh, wants to be a weekend warrior and get after it and kind of do it safely and be, you know, we've got to kind of be careful when we get in our sixties and seventies. Uh, you can encounter heart problems and, you know, anybody that's uh, uh, been, what, what's, what's the injury that we've talked about for the last three years? I don't want to name it, but we want to be careful about it. And right. those that have had that, this can help. And so um, I'm all over this for just a host of reasons. I, I kind of tend to run from people that feel like one thing does everything. But John, you might want to speak to that, how it does affect every cell in your body. And it really does impact every little part of our body in so many ways. So I don't want to overstate, but I'd love for you to give maybe a little bit of that science as we're going, because it's impacting so many areas. Well, that's great. And thank you for your enthusiastic uh, aspects of that. And there's no question that there's great value. For those who would like to learn more about the science behind Cardio Miracle and nitric oxide, which Keith, Michael, and I are talking about today, uh, nitric oxide was essentially give, awarded the Nobel Prize in medicine and physiology back when the Nobel Prize meant something 25 years ago. And that was for its impact on cardiovascular disease, even in the statement saying it reversed atherosclerosis or plaque in the artery, and it helped relax the heart muscle, helped uh, fight inflammation in the arteries, et cetera. That led to, uh, in the science that was developing at the same time about um, erectile dysfunction uh, pills, which have numerous side effects, but are effective in increasing blood flow, but also eventually all of the nitric oxide supplements that bodybuilders, phys uh, physical fitness trainers, et cetera, started using because it increases blood flow and dilates arteries. It opens up the arterial wall, which increases the velocity of the blood, which then continues to increase the body's natural ability to create nitric oxide. But nitric oxide was called the spark of life in the cell by the University of Florida. And then it was also called the miracle molecule by Science Magazine. Uh, Case Western University called nitric oxide the third essential gas, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitric oxide in balancing oxygen and carbon dioxide. And if you get oxygen and carbon dioxide out of balance, that creates the dreaded C word or abnormal cells that can become tumors and becomes uh, the, the issues that many of our, our concerns about. I was just on the phone with one of the top experts in the world and he said, the rate of heart damage, heart disease, heart attacks, strokes and cancers are up in the hundreds of percentile oh. above normal for the 15 to 50 year old demographic. The mm. insurance claims for premature death for people who previously had been almost free of having anything other than an accident has increased many, many fold the last couple of years. We're not gonna get into that, but the reality is all of us have friends, family and loved ones who have died. Uh, the, the leading cause of death now is sudden adult death syndrome, which is all of a sudden people are dying in their sleep. All of a sudden they're having a brain tumor that they you know, never had any sign of before. All of a sudden people are collapsing on the athletic field or those types of things. We witnessed that you know, this year in the NFL, early in the season, people are having incidences and problems, soccer players, 
the tennis players, basketball players all over the world. So, but that aside, nitric oxide is a very important science. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but but I'd like to uh, turn a moment over to uh, Michael. And and we met uh, at a golf tournament, talked briefly, and I shared with him the science. And of course, he looked at me and says, well, why would I listen to a guy who, you know, hmm. looks like uh, Dom DeLuise instead of Jack LaLanne? And I said, well, talk to Keith Clearwater. He's, he's sold on it. So uh, Mike was uh, smart enough to talk to Keith and then figured out that if, if this old guy was still alive, maybe there was something to that part of the story is Dave Thomas or Colonel Sanders. But the reality is uh, Michael's been taking the product, I believe, since about the end of July and pretty, pretty seriously since September. But tell us a little bit about your introduction or as you did, because you actually were a pre-med student, I believe, as well as being a phenomenal athlete. So, yes, I was going to be an orthopedic surgeon. And uh, to this day, I wish I had gone that route, even though I was drafted to play in the NBA, which I don't know who would say no to that opportunity. So I did go that. And at the end of my NBA career, let's say I'm 33 years old, I kind of wish I had gone back into medicine. So there's a part of me that that really craved and and wants to digest the science of all this. And as I'm beginning to digest it, the more and more I read and discover, the more convinced I am that this, like Keith has said, is just one of the breakthroughs in science technology. This product is unbelievable. So I am not a doctor. And so it's hard for me to talk to you about endothelial cells and, and how they communicate you know, with blood and keep them in their liquid state. That's not my place, right? You have others that can do that. But I can tell you two very parallel experiences from two summers ago to this summer. And because I don't compete in basketball anymore, I do compete in golf. And so last summer, not the one that just finished, but let's say the summer before of 2022, I competed for the first time in some golf events uh, in the senior division. They're amateur. They're, I'm not at the level Keith is, but uh, it's fun to compete and still try and I only bring these up because I know the effect they had on my body. So this was playing in, say, the Utah State Amateur. Uh, and I played in that for the first time two summers ago and made it all the way to the state semifinals. But in the middle of that run, which is stroke play, and then, as Keith would tell you, match play, match play, match play until you get to the semis, my left knee ballooned up like, you know, you just can't imagine. And I guess... I haven't played that much golf or that much continuous golf and even sometimes 36 a day to continue to qualify or advance. John, I had to go see a good friend of yours who's Dr. Craig Bueller to calm down my left knee so that I could compete the next day in the quarterfinals and then the semifinals. And he's just a magician and uh, also an advocate of Cardio Miracle. I had not yet met you. I had not yet experienced that, but I just know the toll it took on my body uh, two summers ago when I was trying to practice a lot, as Keith has talked about, or hit drivers every day or dial in your wedge game or whatever it takes to be great at, at your craft physically. It was a lot. And for weeks after I couldn't play and I had swelling in my knees and my joints and I ached when I got out of bed and I didn't want to practice because I knew it was going to hurt. And so What's your choice then to go take anti-inflammatories? Those can't be good. They're going to rip a hole in your stomach. And so I have a direct comparison from last summer, two summers ago, to this summer. And this summer, I competed in all the same events, uh, the Utah State Am, the Utah State Four Ball, and the United States Senior Am. And as the weather got better in Utah, I prepared and, and would hit balls. Early in the summer, I met John. John introduced me to Cardio Miracle. He said, regardless of what you're doing in your life, Mike, you should take this. It's going to help you. It's going to help you sleep better. Your mind will be clearer. You'll have greater clarity of thought. Uh, your blood flow will be incredible. And the inflammation will disappear from your body. And you'll wake up with greater energy and greater ability to recover. And I thought, wow, you mean I could practice every day or practice every other day? The results of that were absolutely what he said were true. Uh, I've been able to practice and train. And I even made it to the United States Senior Amateur, which Keith, I know 
is not at your level, but for a guy who's 58 years old and only tried one time previously, to me, I think it's my greatest accomplishment in sports. That's an Far amazing than... feat, guys. That's an amazing feat, just so you know. Yeah, like this well, was, the ability and, and to that was, practice. Yeah, essentially, you were the runner-up in the state out of the entire state of Utah to qualify for that. Correct. They took two people from the state of Utah and and I was fortunate to be one of them. And I'll just tell you that uh, I felt great in my training. I felt great in my preparation. I felt poised in my performance. I had to make a birdie on the final hole. It was a par five. It was over water. My second shot left me 247. And I, Keith, it was a kidney shaped green like Augustus 12th. <laughs> I didn't dare hit a smoking five wood so i hit a big cut three wood so it would land softly and it held the green i was able to two putt and make the birdie and anyway long story short here i am now in uh you know the end of october almost november one so my my golf uh competition season is over i've begun my next jazz season training or broadcasting this this is not a big deal, right? I am almost 60 years old, but we now perform or broadcast every other night for the next six and a half months. Those would start at seven o'clock at night and I'm getting home at 1130 or midnight after all of the post-game show and the wind down and questions and then you drive home. And you're usually wired afterwards so you don't sleep you know, right away. I'm waking up at six o'clock every morning and not because I'm setting an alarm, not because I have to get the kids up to get them breakfast and get them off to school. My body is waking up. My organs are turned on. My mind is awake and alert. And I begin to think and plan the day and plan the week and think of what's most important. And that didn't happen a year ago. Here's the next thing. I've already begun, and this will make Keith laugh because I consider myself a straight hitter of the golf ball, but not really a long hitter of the golf ball. And so, of course, I'm seeking for an extra five miles an hour of club head speed and greater strength and right elasticity. I've started to train with some very golf specific rotational exercises so I can hit it farther. I've been doing that now for three weeks, obviously still taking cardio miracle. My routine is one big glass in the morning, almost 40 ounces and one at night before bed. I don't drink it during the day, but uh, I find myself that that's plenty. And Keith, I know you train still, and I know you lift still. I'm telling you, a year ago, I couldn't even have done the exercises I'm doing, like reverse lunges with a rotational twist with, you know, really powered bands and holding those those positions or, you know, these these stagnant holds out in front of you with cables and then a twist with a lunge and things that'll be really, I think, beneficial to anybody who plays a, a twisting sport, tennis, pickleball, golf. Um, gosh, I even feel like I could play basketball, even though I won't try that at my dear age. But that's my greatest and the easiest way for me to explain anything, John, is, is the direct comparison from a summer ago when I tried to train as hard and play as hard as I did this summer, one summer without Cardio Miracle, this summer with, and I don't have inflammation. That's the point I was trying to make with this lifting and all the leg work and rotational work I'm doing, Keith. I don't have the back pain or the spasms. I don't have the knee pain or wake up sore. I'm excited to get up and go to the gym and get on to the next day and the next step of this training. I don't think that would be the case. John, yeah. as you know, and Keith, as you know, as you get older, inflammation just tends to sit. It tends to live in mm -hmm. your bones and the cartilage and the joints. And, and if you don't get that inflammation out, you feel old. You, you don't move as quickly and as spry as you used to. And I find myself bounding up and down the stairs. And not that I'm, you know, I still weigh the same, which is good at my six foot 10. And I kind of feel like when you're six ten, a lot of bad things are going to happen because there's a lot of body wherein bad things could happen, but I haven't experienced any of those. And so I'm super grateful that I found this and I, I think it's for real. That's you know, great. If I, could add, if I could just add, you know, sure. inflammation obviously is kind of the bottom line of every problem in our body. 
And yep. when you find a product that can start reducing that, uh, our bodies begin to function like we think they should. And that's an exciting thing when all of a sudden they, you, you know, the little things that kind of held you back are no longer a problem. All of a sudden you feel like, not that you're 22 again, but it just works kind of like you think it should. And we, I almost dismiss it sometimes because it, I feel like that's how I should feel. But I also can remember the times when I didn't feel like, like everything hurt and I was chronically, you know, just sore all the time. And when that goes away, you can attack life. You can feel different about everything. And, and I really believe what you just said, it's, it's inflammation and, uh, and just getting better healing better nutrition. You know, we're, we, you forget all the other elements. There's 53 great ingredients in this product. You know, we're getting fruits and vegetables and a host of things that are, are supporting other pieces of our nutritional needs, not just nitric oxide. So uh, anyhow, it's such a blanket uh, experience to take this product. It just covers so many things. John, John, yes. I, I think it's important that you tell the audience maybe how you came about this. I mean, your emergency appendectomy that sent you to the hospital and then, you know, you had surgeons and doctors telling you you needed quadruple bypass surgery, which we should point out you never had, but right. that's really the genesis of your discovering some of these products. Is that not right? Yes, it is. And, and you know, it's interesting. One little comment on, on uh, your, before I do that, I'm de delighted to do it because it, it's an amazing story. <clears throat> it's amazing the benefits both of you have seen as really world-class senior athletes, world-class senior athletes. <clears throat> I'm just a world-class old person that's still alive and, and able, to, able to function at a very, very high level, working very long days, driving, flying, doing all the things that I'm doing, much to the shock of everyone. I mean, I, I drove to uh, from St. George to Salt Lake, got in late, didn't sleep hardly at all, drove the next day to Montana. And my wife says, are you going to fall asleep? Am I, should I be concerned? And I said, just dose me up another cardio miracle. I'm fine. And so I got here after virtually 48 hours of very little sleep and, you know, slept, slept like a log and feel great. And here I am with two of the great guys I know. But I wanted just to ask before I give you that story, uh, one of the greatest convincing part for athletes, especially when they look at somebody like me versus you guys, is they go, well, how do I know that it's not in my mind? How do I know that it's not the placebo effect? How do I know that it's really working? And I said, well, uh, go on it for a while and then go off it for about three to four days. And in three to four days, you'll go, oh, my goodness, I forgot how bad I used to feel before I got stuck on how good I now feel on a regular dose of Cardio Miracle. And I think, Michael, I think you had an experience at the National Senior Pro-Am, if I don't, if I remember right, that, that you had run out of Cardio it, Miracle. And I know that Keith, Keith has had a couple of experiences. Do, do you guys want to just share perhaps just a little anecdotal story or two about when you've ever run out and how that that brought you to the reality of that something really good was happening when you were taking it. Go ahead, well, Mike. okay. I, I'll just say my, my daughter convinced me to play in a pickleball tournament and I'm, I'm not as proficient as Keith yet, but I want to be, which is great. I, I love that game. There's so much to it. And uh, with the angles and the touch and, and my size in the kitchen at the net is really advantageous, but, <laughs> My, my daughter, my daughter, who's a fantastic athlete, she's 28 years old. Uh, she was probably number five in the state of California as a tennis player as a 10 year old, but couldn't handle the opposing parents, the opponent's parents. And so she got into more team sports and I convinced her to play golf, but she played basketball and golf and she was first team all state in both and then went on to play college basketball. Um, she said, dad, will you play with me in this 4.5 level mixed doubles pickleball tournament. And I said, Maddie, I said, I've played pickleball 12 times in my life and not once in six months. She goes, it's okay, dad, you'll get better every match. And she was right. I got better every match. We made it through group play. We made it to the quarters, Keith. We beat this team in the quarters that we probably shouldn't have. And then in the semis, we beat the next team. And I had to pinch myself and I looked at her. I said, Maddie, we're in the final. She goes, don't think about it. Let's go. We're here to win. I was like, okay. 
And I was kind of content with being in the finals of my first try, but we ended up winning the thing. The point was, this coincided, John, with me running out of Cardio Miracle. So it's partly my fault. It's partly my wife's fault because I was <laughs> taking Cardio Miracle and raving about it. And little did I know that she was also taking Cardio Miracle. So my normal supply, instead of you know decreasing at a normal level, was decreasing it twice as fast. And pretty soon I was out and I hadn't ordered the new one. And so here I am at this pickleball tournament and you know, that was five hours straight that one night to play all through the group play and, and finish the tournament, win the championship. Again, this coincides with maybe three days prior not having Cardio Miracle and another six days before I got it, which was my fault. But my knees hurt, my joints hurt, my back was sore. I didn't even think about going to the gym for the next week, at least, because I kind of ached. Now, A, that was a lot of activity for a 58 year old, maybe who hadn't been training for pickleball, but B, I now can look at it because I've now played pickleball at that level or at that duration while on Cardio Miracle. And I did not experience the symptoms I did when I was off it. Keith? I haven't been off it. I won't go off it. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I don't I don't have any great stories about uh, the big big drop down and the great return. I can just tell you I, I and I uh, listen when there was a supplement to take. If they said two, I would take four. Uh, I've it's been the joke of multiple friends of mine. And so with Cardio Miracle, I probably take four or five a day. It's just something that fuels me. Uh, I I literally have this with me everywhere I go. And I'm drinking it all day long, literally all day long. And uh, I feel like it's kind of my buddy. It keeps me sharper and ready. And I feel good. I feel like my skin's good. My, you know, everything about what I'm doing works. So uh, uh, I don't want to experience a Michael. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> have that kind of, you know, ache in my legs. And uh, so anyhow, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just take a lot keep it up. I don't know that you have to, I just do. And, uh, I I'll tell you this, I caddied up for Tom Pernice about two months ago in an event where he had me carrying a 40 pound golf bag. Everyone else has the little 20 pound carry bags on tour. Nobody thinks they're that important anymore on the champions tour that they need a tour bag except Tom. <laughs> okay. And I'm carrying this big old beast. And we're playing Snoqualmie Ridge, which is absolutely by far the hardest golf course to walk in golf. There's in nothing Seattle. close. Yeah, this in is Seattle. Out of Seattle. And I'm there and I haven't walked or caddied. You know, I play, I do things, but there's a difference being on your feet eight straight hours with a bag on your shoulders, going <laughs> to the range in the morning. Then go. And I was feeling it the last day. I'm not exaggerating. I took eight cardio miracles bottles. I was just drinking one every other hole and I got through it and I felt great. And, uh, it's, it's really, I needed it. I was really pushing my body beyond what it was capable of doing, uh, condition wise. So it's not like a it, it, cardio miracle is a miracle, but it can't make something out of nothing. <laughs> when, when, when I didn't have what I needed, I just kept chugging them, kept drinking them, and I so, got through the day. And I was really surprised that I was able to get through the day. I, this, this will get into a good point for athletic performance here. So tell me, even though at the end of each day you were exhausted, how much soreness did you have in the morning? No, I woke up day. feeling pretty good. I woke that's up every day. The, that's the amazing part. And this is what we would like to – one of the things I'd like to share – you know, the nitric oxide Nobel Prize was awarded because it increased blood flow, it increased the nitric oxide delivery, it dilated arteries, it helped reduce inflammation. But what's missing that we've been uh, uh, touting and articulating is the impact on the lymphatic system. Yeah. The nitric oxide, the endothelial lining that produces nitric oxide is also lines the lymphatic system. And so when you are expressing nitric oxide, you're getting a stronger lymphatic contraction from the outside in, from your extremities in, which helps remove the yeah. ammonia before it accumulates as lactic acid. Now, 
how important is recovery mm. to ath athletes, Michael Smith? And you've been talking about the fact that you're putting in grueling days. I mean, you know, people say, well, television, he sits in a chair, he looks in his, he has this snappy outfit with his pocket square, he and a lemma, a couple of dudes doing the broadcast. But when you're on camera and you have the pressure that you're talking to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, that takes an emotional toll on on anyone and they are emotionally and mentally exhausted at the end of a long day like that. But I would like you just to address briefly the recovery that you've seen both in sports, but even in day-to-day -day life from both you and Keith, because that's one of the biggest deals that people are missing out when they're not using Cardio Miracle is the recovery. Also time travel, uh, the, the jet lag, the changing of time zones, adjusting those types of things uh, we're seeing remarkable results so just just a little feedback on that i i wish i wish i had this product as a a professional athlete flying commercially playing back-to-back -back games in the nba 82 games in six months because you had a game every day or every other day right you had four games a week um i wish i had it uh, as 25 years as a broadcaster because i kept the same schedule uh, broadcasting NBA games. I was on the same flights, the same hotels, obviously not playing at that point. So there's a different toll on your body, but you're so right, John, when you talk about uh, a little bit of mental um, stress that 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 goes into a broadcast, right? I, I've always felt like your preparation, if it's good enough, will allow freedom of expression on television in front of the camera. So what people don't see is maybe the six hours you put in beforehand and that could be in the morning or the night before, as you've prepared to talk intelligently about both teams and what you might expect in a matchup that evening. Now, take that, you might prepare all that material for a certain broadcast, then you might get to the arena and you put your earpiece in and so you can, you're communicating with the truck and you're hearing what the producer wants you to do. Uh, live sports is never scripted, right? So we don't read off a teleprompter, we're going to react to what we see, or we're going to predict what we think we might see. We may have some elements prepared, like footage of a player, but nothing is written down. You're not, I'm not reading a script. I'm reacting and recalling what I've prepared that I think might be important. All that taken into consideration, you could have a mix up in the truck. It happens every single night. If you're not noticing on television that there's mix ups and there's chaos going on, then that just means my broadcast partner and I are pretty good at disguising that because in our ears, they're saying, wait a minute, the graphic we were going to go to, we don't have it. We just lost it. Go ahead and fill for three minutes or go ahead and ask Mike a question. Take it this direction, wherever you want to go, because we got to go recover that. Nobody would ever know that, right? So it's, it's live TV. You're reacting to the chaos. You have to adjust and be on the fly. So to your point, um, at the end of a night, you are exhausted. Like it's 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 it takes its toll, and to and to the point I made earlier, I'm coming home from these broadcasts at say eleven thirty midnight, trying to wind down. I get sleep. I'm awake at six. Mm -hmm. I'm awake at six. I'm ready to go the next day. I do not feel soreness. I do not feel headaches. I do not feel uh, the the toll of like oh it's another day or it's the morning. I'm like ready to go. And I get excited to go to the gym. And that's, again, a direct comparison for me because I didn't have this product a year ago. And I can compare it to a year ago when I was kind of like, oh, here we go again, you know, the same day or the same drill. So um, that's excellent. Excellent. And, you know, I we have a great uh, interview that we could post on, on your uh, web pages with Dr. Avery Jackson, who's a neurosurgeon who talked about the fact that he has never felt such clarity and stamina mm. in the midst of brain surgery yeah. as he has experienced since being on Cardio Miracle the last six wow. months. That's yeah. that's impressive. And I said, you know what? Maybe next time I go in for brain surgery, I'm going to take Cardio Miracle and give it to my surgeon before. So I'm so he's hopefully on his on, on top of his game when he's cutting my you know skull for some reason. Keith, mm -hmm. how about how about your experience on the? lactic acid side and, and some of those other things i'll tell you what my wife's just off camera here 
right after I finished caddying, I texted her. This will sound a little funny, but I said, I love my body. And I was just saying that because I can do things. You know, I feel good. I got through something that's really physically taxing. The other caddies were going, I couldn't get through a round with that bag on your shoulder. You just did it four rounds and you haven't <laughs> been doing it. You haven't been doing this every day. So I, I texted her and I said, honey, I love my body. And we've joked about that. But I really am grateful that I found something that gives me optimum health, foundational health that allows me to do things. And I hope for many more years, but it's allowed me to feel like I can function at my best. And I'm so grateful. I just, I do. I just love the fact that I can still get out and do everything. And I want to keep doing stuff forever. And uh, anyhow, so it's, it's quite a, quite a privilege to align with this product cardio miracle and then actually feel the benefits and be able to go out and do things that maybe a lot of others couldn't do. For those watching this broadcast, if depending on where you find it, if you'd like to go to cardiomiracle.com and use the promo code GOLF, G-O-L-F, uh, you'll be able to get a nice discount. Trying it essentially on uh, Mike and Keith's uh, credibility, their experience, uh, money back guarantee, and uh, it's certainly worth a try. I'd like to address, you know, we only have a few more minutes, but there's so much to talk about, and I can tell my story another time. It's a great story. The fact that I'm here is miraculous enough. That's the cardio miracle. But the, I'd like to ask about the impact of uh, energy drinks, uh, high caffeinated uh, energy drinks, five hour energy, monster, rock star, all of the things that people have, um, uh, jug after jug of uh, diet Mountain Dew, Diet Coke, Pepsi, whatever. Uh, Mike and, and Keith, I would suspect that both of you have been pretty conscientious on, on your health uh, journey and have probably avoided that. But many of your friends, colleagues and other people listening to this might be taking, you know, six cups of coffee every morning to get going. They're living on Diet Coke or Diet Soda. And, and, and there are many, unfortunately, at the younger demographic that are living on these 75 to 150 grams of caffeine as both guys who are extremely physically fit and uh, high performance as baby boomers or, or pre-baby boomer for, for Michael, what what would your advice be on the caffeinated side versus Cardio Miracle becoming their replacement or the go-to drink? Mike? Mike, are you there? Did we lose yes. You? Oh, it, it appeared that it timed out, but you're back. Oh, you're good. Okay. Okay. So I, like Keith, am a bit of a fitness fanatic. I got into healthy eating when I started playing in the NBA and, and not that I'm perfect, but for the most part, during the middle of the week, I would always eat pretty healthy. When I first started playing golf, Keith will get a kick out of this. I'm still, I'm playing in the NBA. And one of my teammates, Larry Bird says, Hey, when we go to Phoenix, you need to get hooked up with a golf club company and they'll make you a set of clubs. Keith, they made me a set of beryllium copper irons, right? <laughs> Ping, I had some, yeah. Yeah, they were fantastic. They were the I-2s. They were beautiful. It's my first ever set of clubs. And so after about two years of me pounding balls, right, they lost their luster. So they were no, no longer this beautiful, brilliant copper color. They were more kind of a rusty brown. And <laughs> so I, I think I called someone. And I said, how can I restore the shine to these beautiful irons? And they, they told me, well, go buy a couple of liters of Coke. Coca-Cola. And pour them in your sink and put the tap in there so it doesn't drain. And bathe those irons overnight in the Coke. And when you wake up in the morning, they'll be good as new. And I said, how is that even possible? And he said, well, he goes, you know, just, you can't even tell, but just, microscopically they will eat off you know just the the most finite layer of the the, the copper Rust. and, and they will store a new layer almost, almost like a, a derma <laughs> break or, or almost like a, a facial and and so sure enough i did it i'm probably 25 years old and and maybe 26 and i woke up in the morning i pulled these you know 14 clubs or 12 clubs out of the tub of coke and they were beautiful <laughs> and and i determined two things that morning 
That's how I restore copper to its luster and its original state. And number two, I'll never drink soda in my life. Wow. So, so uh, uh, I, I just figured if that's what it's doing to a metal golf club, imagine what it's doing to my stomach. But so I'm not a soda drinker. And I can honestly say to all of you, I've never had an energy drink in my life. I've never had a monster, a five hour. I've never had any of those. Scared to death of them, actually, because of my experience there with the golf clubs and the Coke. So hmm. I don't know the science behind them. I have read reports of gaming kids who drink them all night and wake up in the morning dead. I don't know how accurate those stories are. I've always cautioned my kids against them. But so I'm I'm not a soda intaker. I'm not a monster energy guy. But um, it's a pretty scary world out there if if kids and people are consuming those repetitively. Right, Keith? Yeah, I wish I could have a perfect record like you do i uh if i'm drinking if i'm having mexican food or something i'll have a diet coke and i it just kind of goes down better i i i feel like i've got so much cardio miracle in my body that i'm fairly well protected You're find it. well that's good we call, <laughs> we call it the ultimate mulligan we call cardio miracle the mulligan Keith. so the, re, the reality though is uh, obviously we know that cardio miracle dilates your blood vessels expands them softens them gets better blood flow and caffeine constricts your blood vessels so they get tighter and your blood pressure goes up and all that you know so it pushes so you do get a surge of energy uh and you'll all feel it but uh listen my experience is that on the golf course with the jitters and caffeine and whatever nobody's performance can be improved by any of those drinks it's just not going to help anything and we know there's a crash afterwards. I don't care if you're you're decap or if you're on sugarless or full full octane. Full strength. Yeah. Full strength. Uh, I I know on the golf course I'll never take a caffeine drink. It just won't happen. Uh, and occasionally, you know, at dinner. But uh, boy, the the epidemic of kids and others who push through their day on caffeine and these drinks. It they they never are optimized. And I've had people that have gotten off it because of being on Cardio Miracle during the day. Guys that would drink a Coke, they have Coke on, in all the little uh, uh, what coolers. coolers and stuff on the golf course. And a lot of guys drink them. And guys are now on the Champions Tour getting off that and taking a, having a, car, a water and a Cardio Miracle. So great. great progress. It's great to have a product that actually offers that level of I don't know, of energy and, and sustaining ability that uh, they maybe only felt like they could get with a caffeine drink. So what a great thing to start pushing that through and changing uh, maybe the way people think about how to feel better during the day. Love it. Well, thank you. Thank you for those comments. You know, I, I want to just uh, tie this up. This has been a blast. I, really fun. And we're, we're going to do it again. And we would hope that you would share, everyone would share this video of these two great athletes and two great human beings and their wisdom and advice on how nitric oxide has become a new game enhancer. You know, game changer, mulligan, whatever. In, in my situation, I, you know, two weeks ago, I was climbing the hills of Santorini, Greece, which is a mile and a half uphill, 3,000 steps mm. with a bunch of donkeys carrying other people. And I was climbing them and, and literally, you know, I'm, I've lost 40 pounds, but I'm still, you know, about, I'm probably still about six inches short from my weight. So if I was Mike's height, I'd probably be close to perfect. But <laughs> the, the reality is I climbed the hills of Santorini. Now I had to, just like you, Keith, as your caddy experience, even though you're in a million times better shape than me, but in climbing the hills of Santorini, I had to stop about every major switchback halfway and janet and i drank two bottles of cardio miracle it took us 70 minutes to climb a million a mile and a half straight uphill of some of the steepest train dodging the uh, the biscuits from the burrows and the donkeys and donkeys coming and going and tourists everywhere and when i got to the top i thought i might just die right here so we talk about and i thought well that's not going to look very good Cardio Miracle founder dies of a heart attack at the top of Santorini. <laughs> well, 30 minutes later, as I'm eating the, the most interesting uh, plate of calamari I've ever had in my life with 
with the squid still moving on my plate, I my blood pressure was was 120 over 76, and my pulse had dropped all the way back to about 65. Wow. Now, at my size and at my age and in my level of fitness, that's a miracle. And the next day, zero soreness, wow. zero, not an ounce. Now, what I so I when I I laugh when I say cardio miracle, and Keith, thank you for your candor. I mean, you, there are people who I you know you're. Your fault might be an occasional Diet Coke. Mine might be two bratwursts at the turn or, uh, or, or lasagna. But the reality is, I believe Cardio Miracle is the ultimate mulligan. It, it literally can help those who don't live perfectly, who don't do all the exercising and things you do. It, the thing I love about it is it can take the, the poor in shape, the weekend warrior who shouldn't even be a warrior. Or if they're just a weekend wimp going out there and subjecting themselves to torture, but gardening, no soreness. Uh, shoveling snow, no soreness. Uh, all these types of things. And yet here you guys are both world-class amateur and professional athletes still at this stage, and you're seeing the benefits. So when people say, well, how long do I have to take Cardio Miracle? I said, only as long as you want to feel well, as, yeah. long, as long as you don't want to get sick. Uh, I have not been sick one day missing work in 17 and a half years since I've been on nitric oxide. And wow. I'm around sick people all the time. And I sat on an airplane for nine hours with a bunch of people coughing and hacking and everything else. And I had a little sniffles and I just doubled down, took four scoops, six scoops of Cardio Miracle. And in 24 hours, I was fine. But I never missed a beat comparatively. And what is that worth? People often say, well, it's kind of pricey. And I go, compared to what? Yeah. Cardio Miracle for our subscription people is between $1.35 and $1.50 a serving. It costs, how much does it cost to get a bottle of water, Michael, in an airport? $7 yeah. yes. for know. A, you know, a, a liter of purified tap water. $7. How much does it cost for people's Starbucks? How much does it cost for 32 ounces at, at, at your local gas station for your diet coke or your diet mountain dew or your red bull or whatever you're talking two three four dollars for things that are poisoning you cardio miracle is giving you as like according to keith people can eliminate 75 80 percent of their supplements in fact if they took no other supplement according to dr david jim tempo and judy mikovitz and david martin and as you know all of these great experts they'd all say if they could only take one supplement in the world they would take Cardio Miracle. And so I'm grateful to have these great, great human beings, better human beings, even than they are great athletes, also helping to endorse and to help spread the miracle of nitric oxide, vitamin D3 absorbability, good health, vitality, and mobility, as well as athletic performance and recovery, and also prevention of injury and recovery from knee replacement, uh, hip replacement, surgeries of all kinds. We're seeing amazing benefits. We're going to tell you more about that in the days ahead. So I'll just turn it over to each of you for a closing statement. And thanks so much for being with us. And thanks to the audience. Remember, go to cardiomiracle.com. Use the promo code GOLF um, so that I can afford to take uh, Keith and, and Mike out golfing sometime, even though <laughs> Keith can always get on for free. <laughs> well, uh, I'll go first, Keith, and then you can finish up. I just... I feel really grateful in my life for all the blessings that I have. Uh, I've been healthy. I, I want to stay healthy. I have 10 children, if you can believe that, five boys and five girls, and only three grandchildren so far. So only three of my 10 are married, and each one of those three has one child. Um, I want to be around. I want to be around to teach them. I want to be around to mentor them. I want to be around to play with my grandchildren, share the secrets of sports and life and and all the things that are important as long as I can. I, I come from, I would say, good genes. My mom and dad are still with us at 89 and 87, although not the beneficiaries of being mobile. They, they don't move very fast and don't move very well, but their minds are super sharp. So I'm hopeful that I can be not only sharp as I age, but also pass on the gifts that I've been given to many, many others, not just my family, but friends and others. So Grateful for you, John, for introducing me to this great product and Keith for your friendship and 
and and mentorship not only with the product but with the game of golf i'm uh keith is correct i could i could get on the phone i could talk to john for hours about this product and i could get on the phone with keith and we could talk about this and we could talk about golf without stop like <laughs> unceasingly it's so much fun but uh i really appreciate you both and thanks for this opportunity to be on well mike you're awesome yeah you know, i would only say if you if you've not tried this product, you need to get on it. It's an absolute game cha changer for every part of your life. There is, you have everything to gain. Everybody I talk to, I say, get on it for two months. Try it for two months. If you, if you don't see, if you don't see what we're talking about, get off it. I just, you know, if yeah. you don't like something, get off it. Don't stay on it. I wouldn't, you know, I've, I've been hit up by so many supplement companies because I always had a reasonable fit body and I was always known for being in shape. And so they thought that would align nicely. Uh, there's nothing like this product. There just isn't. And so uh, you, you need to try it. We've kind of shared all our anecdotal. It's real. You're going to feel different. Uh, you know, for my age and peer group, I would just say for safety going out doing golf or if you pick it up you pick you know pick a ball and you're going hard at that it's a safety it's just it's something that protects your heart it protects your body it protects your mind when you're pushing you know from stroke and other things that gives you a chance to go out and do the things you want to do later in life and enjoy it so it's a it's i don't know how anyone could not want to at least try for two months and see how their body feels because you'll you'll be sold i've never had anyone that i've been able to get to the point where they'll take the product where they don't stay on it nobody so uh it's it's something that can change lives it can make the way you feel uh just feel like you're you're attacking life again and i i want to do that until i'm off this earth i hope it's a long time but I'm a big believer in pushing, having passion. And if you don't feel good, you know, I'll just end with this. Tony Robbins, I went to a 10-day seminar and he spent a half a day talking about on your values hierarchy, the number one thing that matters most. You know, we'd say love and kindness and relationships. And all. He said, no, the number one thing is your health. And you lose that, you'll spend the rest of your life spending all your money trying to get that back. And uh it's not worth it when you can do it for a buck 29 or 30 a day or, or per serving and uh, recapture a lot of your health. Uh, no brainer. So I, I just, I'm so grateful. I ran into John and I've got this kind of new, new outlook on life and I can push forward in a host of things I want to do as I go forward. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be with you gentlemen. Love and appreciate you. Hope the audience can sense the sincerity of your great comments and your insight. And uh, <clears throat> here's to the mulligan of life, I guess, cardio miracles. So let's, uh, let's look forward to the days ahead and please share this with others. Uh, these are remarkable human beings. And I believe that um, nitric oxide is the spark of life. It will give you the many, many benefits and blessings you want to share with your children, grandchildren and loved ones. And the Lord knows that we have tough times right now and uh, we can prioritize our health so that we can help fight the good fight and do the things that would help us to have the greatest impact on our family, our country, and those other things that we believe in. So thanks for being with us. It's John Hewlett, founder of Cardio Miracle, signing off with Keith Clearwater and Michael Smith. Thanks for being, uh, for listening, and please share this with others and go to that website and give it a try. Uh, I guarantee that it will be life-changing for you as well. Thank you very much. Keith, it's a three-wit for me off that tee every time. <laughs> this is actually the par three back towards the clubhouse. So I oh, think that's it's... right. I keep thinking it's 18 over there. No, you're hitting like a little seven iron from the back tee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat>